Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Oh, we've got loads coming up this week. We've got a new bike from Envy, new e-bikes, new muck-off helmet, new park tools, your upgrades, the bike vault, plus... Our main talking point, the pro's secret tyre weapons for the cobbles. Right then, last week's poll, when I wasn't here, you asked what everyone thinks of the new Oakley Encoder sunglasses, hot or not. What do you think? I thought they were very hot. Okay, yeah. well, you agree with the audience. 75% say hot. Perfect. Nice. Um, should we go on to our main talking point? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Right then, on to our main talking point. Many of you might have seen Sai's brilliant video on the weekend, which featured one of the most exciting tech development in years, Victoria Run Flat Tires. Tires with liners that allow you to ride with a flat tire. Naturally, this did get us thinking about tire tech and the tires that pros will use in the Cobble Classics because they are incredibly demanding events with all sorts of brutal surfaces as well. In the past, it would have been a very short conversation. The pros would have used a set of 25mm Degust tubular tires. They were durable and they were the choice for all the pros on the Cobble races. Continental then joined in with some success with their Pro Limited tubulars, which featured, well, 25 and 28mm widths. And they even made special Pro Limited versions which featured a latex inner tube sewn into them mm. as well as a special version designed for the tougher cobbles such as Paris Bay which featured a reinforced carcass and Matt Heyman famously won Paris Bay using those. Pro Mechanics then started putting sealant into tubular tyres for added puncture protection and it's something they still do today. But then tubeless tyres came around and following on from that Vittoria have made, wait for it, oh. their airliner oh. tyre liner system. There it is. And this is something that the pros have been using in secret for almost two years now. Yeah. And if you want to find out a little bit more about it, well, then you need to check out Sai's in-depth video on this. EF Education, Nippo and UAE have both been using them and have won races on them. But these are a little bit different to your mountain bike liners and liners that you have in cars. So Alex, tell us more. Well, as you say, yeah, let me get one out of the box first. So inside here, this is the tire liner, like you see. And this is a closed cell foam. So what that means is all of the little holes inside, the, inside this foam liner are closed in and as your tyre is inflated, the air pressure around your tyre squishes this down so it shrinks into a small little, small little foam size. And then when you puncture, the air pressure inside your tyre goes. This then expands to fill the tyre up and means you can carry on riding. Amazing. It is pretty amazing, isn't it? And the best clever. advantage it has for the pros is that it means if they are to have a puncture, they don't need to immediately stop. They can ride to the next section, ride to where the team car is or where there's help at the side of the road, and then they can get a wheel change. These are said to maintain the low rolling resistance and supple feel that you get with tubeless tyres, but one of the big advantages is that crucially, your tyre remains in place if you have a puncture. And this has been one of the big reservations of the pros when adopting tubeless tyres over tubular tyres. Yeah, you would not want to roll a tyre. But a question I have been wondering is why is tubeless better for the cobbles? God, I'm glad you've asked that actually. Because using tubeless tyres is lower rolling resistance and the fact that these can be run at a lower tyre pressure, which is great for over the cobbles. And more and more this season, we're seeing tubeless tyres being used more by the pros. Yeah, Jasper Stoyan actually won Milan San Remo on tubeless tyres and the likes of Oliver Narsen and Greg Van Avermaet also opt for tubeless tyres to something which uh, Mr. Tubeless over there will be very pleased about. Inner tubes are rubbish. I hate them. Some of the reasons why the pros are increasingly opting for a tubeless tyre setup is because of the lower rolling resistance. I've already mentioned this quite a bit, but even the five watt saving that you can have over a tubular tyre is pretty crucial when you're racing. Yeah, also the ability to seal up some punctures. They also come in wider sizes because you don't see many tubular tyres wider than 25 millimetres. No, and you can run lower pressure if you want to. And also the air tightness. It's a lot more consistent and reliable. And that's something I've noticed as well. And the pros love sticking to what they know because they, they are do. a bit cautious when it comes to adopting new technology. Um, and it's just great to see gradually more and more pros are prepared to use tubeless tyres. In fact, I think we should have a tubular tyres extinction clock. That didn't end very well last time, the rim brake extinction clock. I think that's still going. Yeah, but I think tubular tyres will be extinct in three years, 46 days. I'll hold you to that, Alex. Well, I think we should have a poll on this. Will tubular tyres be extinct, yes or no? 
vote in the GCN app and let us know how many years, months, days, hours, seconds until they go extinct. It's now time for hot and spicy tech. First up, Mockoff have released custom POC helmets for the EF Education First Nippo team. And these are to pay tribute to essential key workers during the global COVID pandemic. And on the helmet, it says thank you in multiple languages. And the EF Education Nippo team have chosen names of key workers to put on the helmet. God, this is very cool, isn't it? Yeah, I do like that. I like the fact that the picture has got Alex written on it. Has it? Mm. Of course. Very I don't good. think Manon's on there. No. No. Up next, Park Tools have released some professional grade tools, and something that caught my eye is the diamond grit adapter for their brake facing tool. And it's said to be 100 times more durable than the normal cutting face. And it's designed for carbon frames specifically, so that you can get your calipers aligned perfectly with the rotor. That's a good thing, Manon. It is a good it thing. It is a good thing. What have we got up next? Next up, a new bike from Envy. Envy, a brand known for their components and wheels, have launched their first custom road bike. And you know what it's called? What? It's called the Envy Custom Road. Mm. What do you make of that? I think it looks stunning, but it kind of reminds me of the Scott foil, which does make sense because Simon Smart also worked for Envy and Scott. Do love the paint job though. Oh, God, me too. And there's uh, race and all road options with geometry and tire clearance to suit those. And crucially, it uses a modular tube to tube construction so that each frame is custom made to fit the rider perfectly. Prices start from $7,000 all the way up to $12,000. And my favorite part about this bike is that each bike is custom painted. So you can choose whatever design you want on it. And as you expected, you can choose your specs on there too. Whilst it's not the lightest frame out there, it is still very competitive. And whilst each design and frame will vary in the weight because it's custom made, a raw 56 centimeter carbon frame is said to weigh just 850 grams. And they have um, mudguard eyelets too. Alex loves mudguards. Up next is a brand new urban e-bike from Specialized called the Como SL. SL stands for super lightweight. And it is 17 kilograms, which is pretty light for an urban e-bike, and has a 35 kilogram luggage capacity, as well as mug guards. It does look pretty cool, but should we have a look at some of the key details? Yeah, go on. Well, start us off, we've got three modes. We've got Eco, Sport, and Turbo. Oh, it's like a car. It is. It's got ground control geometry. It's got automatic headlights. It's integrated as well. Oh, integrated. 320 watt hour battery. It's got 93 mile range. Oh, and it features a bell drive too. Talking of Specialized, did you see Casper Asgrin won Tour of Flanders on Turbo Cotton Hell of the North clincher tires? And that is the first time in history anyone has won that race on clincher tires. That's just knocked a few years off the time clock thing. Death of cheapness. Yeah. It's gone right down there. Yeah, it's a few months, maybe yeah. six months, I reckon. Easily. Right, final bit of hot tech this week, and we have got some new chain lube, and it's called Link Lotion, developed by Swedish inventor Ulf Palanium. Ollie did say you're obsessed with lube. But this is no ordinary lube, Mel. This is 52% pure paraffin wax, and it is designed as a super clean alternative to oil. It features no solvents, it's eco-friendly, and it works down to minus 10 degrees, and it's handmade in Sweden. Oh, that's cool. I've got an image of like a guy just stirring a big yeah. cauldron of chain lube up. Mm. Anyway, more hot tech next week. Right, it's now time for snacks of every other week, and I wasn't here last week, so I'm looking forward to today. Sorry, but we ate all the snacks last week and we don't have any snacks this week, so no snacks the, the week this week. Anyway, moving on to screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bikes or cycling knives for a chance to win the ultimate prize. A GCN award. Oh, we, got one in there. we do have one somewhere. Anyway, hey. let's uh, take a look at last week's results. So last week, when I wasn't here, you had um, a lot of snacks. Yeah, our Bovenkamp's Gazelle Champion Mondial up against Neil Ray's Peugeot Rebuild. Two good upgrades. And I can confirm, Neil Ray's Peugeot Rebuild resounding victory, fifty-four percent. Get in touch over on Facebook, and um, we'll organise getting a water bottle out to you. Right, first up, we have got Daniel Carno, who says. When you have your dream stealthy colour scheme on your head for a while and painting the bike in Toronto, Canada is so expensive, you have to look for other options to achieve your visions. Um, so he's done a complete bike respray in gloss black and matte. I think that's a very standards. good colour choice. I love a matte black stealth. Just trying to look bike. now what we've we got. Oh yeah, car, very stealthy. Literally painted everything on his bike. Yeah. Including the, the cranks, chain rings. Yeah. Painted the chain rings. Wow. I should, I should have done that on my on my 
what do oh, they imagine spray that paint like? Imagine a colour shift chain ring. God, yeah, I do like where he's masked all of the different areas of the frame up, painted it, but kept, crucially, some of the key sort of details of that frame. Um, you can see some of the lettering and stuff as well. So that must have taken a long time to mask that up. Right then, as Ollie would say, is not going to be plain sailing. So it, who's he up against? It never is plain yeah. sailing. He is up against Robin Martin's 961. And he's got this bike. It's an old Gazelle Von 2 that he, uh, his uncle didn't use anymore. And he decided to turn it into a fixie. After lots of thinking, he decided to go for a yellow and black combination. I feel like the colour choice is the hardest bit mm. when you're choosing to paint a bike. Um, opted for a flip-flop wheel, so swapping it from a fixie to a single, single speed was easy. And he also kept the original bike spirits in the same bike stickers as the original ones. Good work. And this is going to be the ultimate commuting slash coffee bike ride. Gosh. Hope you guys like it. I do like a coffee bike ride. They're my favourite time. <laughs> Um, yeah, God, the original bike does look quite tired, and it does. the colour scheme is not to my liking. There's a lot of rust down there. Very rusty. Yeah. Um, the yellow is very cool, though. Um, strong colour choice. Yeah. Yellow and black is strong together. Bit of a like bumblebee. Love the front wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Six spoke. God, yeah, famous six spoke. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, head over to the GCN app and vote on what your favourite upgrade is. It's now time for the bike vault where you upload your pictures and Manon and I decide if they're nice or super nice and if they're super nice... I ring the bell and they go to the bike vault forever and ever and ever. Okay, first one this week is from Alex Agachi. Um, his son's 3.5... 100% <laughs> super nice. Look at it. Everything's in line. I didn't even get a chance to look at the picture before you super nice it. Yeah, <laughs> well, right. Super nice. Okay. Everything's lined up. That is very good from a 3.5 year old. Very good. Next up, we've got Christian and a specialised Diverge e Elite E5. Oh, what on earth? It's the wrong way round. Oh, just a nice. We the can't be having that. Oh, jeepers. Too many things with that. Wow. Right, on next to the next one. one. Um, this one is from Link22 Aragon. Interesting, Interesting. username. Um, with a Ooh. Trek Hilo 1000. This is interesting. Oh, retro. Those handlebars. God. I mean, that the tilt on that saddle. Whoa, well, hold on. There are not even any pedals on this bike. There's a lot going on here. I mean, that's got to be just a nice... Not even oh, got pedals on the bike. Part of me wants a super nice, because it is, it is a super nice bike, but it isn't super nice in bike vault world. Well, so I guess it's just a nice. It's just a nice. It's just a nice. Next up, we've got Callum Robert 17 with a giant TCR. Uh, oh, gee. How are people sending them in the wrong way around? Do they do it to, like, get to us? I think they do. I think they... I think they take yeah. the piss now. <laughs> oh, God. But I think they are using a shadow stand on this bike. Oh, they might be, to be fair. Good choice of that. Points of, um, for the shadow stand. Yeah. However, we can't let it slide. No. 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 On to the next one. It's just a nice... This is from... Um, B... J, well, B underscore J underscore 76, Rolling Hills, Southwest Sydney, with his, another giant TCR. This is the giant show today. Yeah. Bit of a jaunty angle. It is, but they have made an effort to take the saddlebag off because the saddlebag's on the fence. Oh, yeah, the effort is there. Background, yeah. very good. The background is nice. Gears almost in the right, right place. I think, yeah, Valves yeah. aligned. Crank's not quite there, but I feel like we've been quite harsh this week. We have. Well, They've well, you particularly, you particularly have been quite harsh. Um, what do you mean? I'm going to let that slide as a super nice because I think it's just all round good picture. It's not the it's not the most super nice super nice I've ever seen, but it is it's super nice. Well, ring that bell. Oh, that was the last one. Yeah. That was the last one this week. It Unfortunately, was. that's it for this week's GCN Tech Show. Um, and if you want to buy any good GCN merch, we'll head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork and pick it up. Yeah, and if you did enjoy this tech show, then please give it a big thumbs up. See ya. I think Ollie's back next week. Oh, see ya so another I'm off. time. Yeah, I'm off. Bye.